All right, so this week we are looking at torque, um, and that's what our lab four is around. Um, basically what torque is, it's just the measurement of force that can cause an object to rotate around its axis, okay? So there's two components you need to think about when you think of torque. That's the force exerted and then the moment arm. The moment arm, that's basically um, just the distance between the axis of rotation so you have your axis and then the force application. So wherever the force is at, depending on where that is, it's going to determine how long your moment arm is. Okay. So if it's closer to the axis, say you exert force here to rotate something, that's going to be a shorter moment arm. Whereas if out here, I would have a longer moment arm to exert force. Okay. So the equation you need to think about for torque is force times the moment arm. And sometimes people will call the moment arm the force arm, okay? So I want you to think about this because in this experiment, in this lab four, we are manipulating the moment arm in torque, okay? You're going to be doing sit-ups. And basically, your, your heels will be on the ground just as you can see in the visual pictures on the lab. But your hips will act as the axis of rotation, okay? So your torso is going to be moving around your hips, um, which is the axis of rotation. Now, what is the force application part? Um, because that's what we need to think about when we are looking at our moment arm. Force application is going to be the medicine ball you're holding, okay? So you're going to be doing as many sit-ups as you can in 60 seconds when the ball is at your chest, and then you're going to try it again when the ball is overhead, okay? So if we think of torque and our moment arm, so if the ball is the force application, how far away is that from the hips when it's just at your chest, okay? It's not that far, whereas when we put the ball overhead, that's considerably, considerably farther from your hips, which are the axis of rotation, than would be the chest. So... When you do this exercise, ideally you will see that when the moment arm is shorter, so when the ball is at your chest, you will be able to do a lot more sit-ups than you would with the ball overhead, okay? You're not going to be able to do as many in 60 seconds when the ball is overhead. Why is that? Well, if we want to exert the same amount of torque, um... If we want to rotate our torso the same amount around our hips, basically it's going to take a lot more force for us to do so with the ball overhead than would at our chest, okay? So we're not going to be able to do as many in 60 seconds when it's over our head. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the basis of what we're doing for our lab. Um, so go ahead and use the data of six subjects, and you're going to compare their chest and overhead um, you're going to do the average and standard deviation for that as well as a t-test. So the uh, explanation for doing a t-test is right on this lab. All right, it's right underneath the table. If you have any questions, you can definitely ask us. Um, but honestly, videos on YouTube for basic things in Excel like a t-test are super helpful. Um, they could probably explain it a lot better than we can. Um, but you'll be doing this t-test, and it's basically going to show you um, a p-value. That's the value you'll get from a from a t-test, okay? And the p-value tells you if there is significant difference between two variables, okay? So between the chest sit-ups and the overhead sit-ups, okay? Overall in six participants. So... This kind of goes along with one of your discussion questions. Um, number one talks about, it, it asks you if there's a significant difference between the two exercises, okay? I just want to clarify with the t-test, with significant difference, um, this is not based on opinion, okay? So it's not based on your observation that the chest sit-ups had a lot more reps than the overhead sit-ups, okay? Okay. We're using stats, statistics, to tell us whether or not those two variables are statistically different, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you go to answer your question one, remember that 
that question, the significant difference, is based on your p-value, okay? So how the heck do you know if it's significantly different? Well, it tells you on your directions here. If your value, if your p-value that you get from the t-test is less than 0.05, that means the two variables are, are significantly different from each other, okay? That's not the case if the value is over 0.05, all right? <clears throat> Even if they look really different from each other. Um, okay, so for that, you'll have to do that t-test. Um, for this lab, you have to make a table, just like the one shown on the lab. And then you will have to create a bar graph as well, similar to the one you see on here. Um, and I just want to point out that it's extremely important to... Um, show that there's significant difference on a bar graph if if so and the way that you do this and you'll see it on the bar graph in this lab there will be an asterisk over one of the bars okay doesn't matter which bar you put it over but this little asterisk will show you that these two variables are significantly different from each other okay and then basically in your other discussion questions you'll have to talk about why this is so does this make sense that it's harder um, to do the overhead sit-ups with the longer moment arm than it is with the chest sit-ups and why um, if you talked about this in lecture use those lecture notes to explain why that would be harder all right and then the last discussion question you're going to have to give a practical example of another exercise you could use this concept on so this could be anything and we want you to get pretty creative with this so if you think of any exercise that you could manipulate the moment arm um, to make it harder or easier, what would you choose? Okay, and go ahead and, and explain yourself on that. Okay, awesome.